finally, we get to finally start the lead-in to what I think of Springfield, Illinois, after that way back machine history of the area, at least. Now, at the beginning of this slideshow presentation, I mentioned that there was a slide that was going to be important later on, and it was the size of the city. Let's take a look. So here it is. It's nine and a half miles wide, 8.2 or so miles long, north and south. That's the size. It's always been that size. And my analysis and description of what goes on in Springfield is based on knowing this particular fact and what I'm about to tell you, which is population. I'm gonna show you what's been going on since that Wayback Machine all the way until present day. And remember, things I'm talking happens all within that boundaries that you're looking at right there. Everything happened within that boundary. Here we go. Let's take a look at the population. Although the first structure of a hunter's cabin was built in 1820 and the area wasn't even a state yet, uh, the state became a state in 1818 and the city of Springfield didn't even have that name or exist until 1832. Then more hunters came and more families came and people started to grow and the state started implementing uh, a census to try and figure out what was going on with the state. And so here we see back in 1900, one of the very first censuses that we know of, there was 34,159 people in that area that we now call Springfield. 10 years later, let's do another census. Look at that, 51,678. 10 years later, 59,183 in 1920. Think of the history books of things that were going on in 1930 in this area, yet Springfield still grew. In 1930, census said 71,864, still growing. December 7th, 1941, we went to war when Pearl Harbor was attacked. Yet just a year before 1940 in the census, Springfield still grew a little bit more, 75,503. 10 years later, another small increase, 81,628. See how this keeps growing? And remember, we're working within the same boundaries that I described earlier. 1960s came along, all the, what they call the hippie generation, the peace and love, but still Springfield grew, 83,271. We have a famous series called That 70s Show based on the 1970s and Springfield grew again, 91,753. Now at this point, the census people started doing numbers every five years instead of 10. So just five years later, 95,903. And 1980 for Springfield was the first time it crested the six digit figure mark, 100,054. Just five years later, 102,000. 640, still growing. 1990 comes along and we're still having issues in the government and back then we were on the verge of war back then as well and we got 105, 227 and still growing. And every little bit counts on these. So every another five years go by, 108,340, still a larger number. And it was the year 2000, Y2K, in which computers were supposed to crash and we were supposed to have a big investment crash, everyone was gonna lose their money, and governments were gonna go awry, and it was a crazy time period. Everything was gonna go back to a place where no one could survive, basically. It was pretty scary that people were actually thinking this. But during all the scary time of Y2K, Springfield's population went up to 111,454. 2005, five years later, 117,456. And for this record, our final official record is 2010 with a population of 116,250. It dropped by 1,000, but that didn't change because just the following couple of years, they made an estimation based on things Springfield was doing of where we are at now for population. And here's what they wrote on our signs. Finally, Springfield, Illinois, they estimate is 117,500. So I'm gonna be curious of where we're gonna go in the future. But keeping in mind, all those numbers kept rising and rising and rising while still fitting into this area. The same area that like 20,000 people used to fit presently hold 117,000 people. So the people are now closer together. They're not spread out neighbors that you have to ride a horse to two and three miles to go see your neighbor. That people from all around the world now and all around other parts of the country and from different areas and different cultures, they're all together in a close proximity with one another. 
and you're going to find people that disagree with each other. That's what you're going to have. Back then, everybody was living off the land, and they were all farmers and agriculture, and they all had the same purpose and the same goal. But this is a city of a melting pot of different people all within close proximity of each other to see what their neighbors are doing and to decide whether they like what their neighbors are doing or not. So we're going to talk about circles. That's the next thing on this list and that's where my opinion of the city comes from. It's the definition of circles in the city. So let's start with the basic of circles that most people will identify with that actually live here in Springfield. The first one. Hey, are you a North Ender? Are you from the South Side? Are you from the West End? Are you from the East End? Or maybe you're from the downtown people area. So what you're seeing here is although people share a geographical circle, inside those, there's other smaller circles. They can have social circles, religious circles, cultural circles, and people here in this town seem to put themselves in one of these smaller circles. The catch is once they're in the circle, they stay in that circle literally for their entire life because I meet lots of people and they all say this town is great I meet other people this town is crappy this town this town is bad and other ones say this is perfect they all have these opposite views of what Springfield is and that's because whatever circle they put themselves into that is their viewpoint of Springfield Illinois so if they're in a place that seems to be treating them well or a circle that's treating them well, then Springfield is a great place. But if they found themselves in a circle that's not giving them what they expected and they don't leave that circle, that's, that's the trick that about Springfield residents, no matter what it is, they stay where they're at. That means this town is bad to them because their viewpoint is stuck within the circle that they're in. And that's for almost everyone I've met that either live here or have passed through here or toured here. They say it's good, bad, indifferent, it's okay, but it's all based on where they place themselves. But there's one thing I got to share, and that's this next slide. You may notice some uh, different colored circles inside the various other circles. That because there are some people that I would call circle jumpers. In other words, their personality doesn't really fit inside a circle. So they have friends and roam from place to place. And they may have friends in those other circles, but let me tell you, a circle jumper is not really welcomed in those other circles. They know where you're from and they assume you're in some other circle. Therefore, you don't belong in their circle. So why are you here? Well, I'm here because I know that person. Well, okay, whatever. And so that's kind of... They, people not only are in circles, but they assume what circles you are in. But there are people who don't belong in any of them. They just float around. They're circle jumpers and they go from place to place and meet people. And that's kind of where I fall in. I have friends from all over and I go to their place where all their friends hang out. And I, you can feel the chill sometimes. Unless that circle is even similar to the one you come from or if you don't belong to any. So my view of Springfield is based on what you're seeing here. Being a person who is able to freely go from circle to circle, and I'm not uh, banished from that circle, but I may not be welcomed until I prove myself worthy to be in that circle. And that's a lot about how Springfield works right now. But Springfield started from a log cabin on 2nd and Jefferson. In the Civil War, every county in Illinois had an infantry, had soldiers. There were people fighting for the Civil War cause and for the things that Illinois wanted. We have the terrible history of the 1908 race riots where the military came in and it was a police state with them, the military, living right on the front lawn of the Capitol. I mean, they lived everywhere. The military stayed in Springfield, we, and we got through that. We got through the Great Depression. There were people doing anything to make even a nickel. And even during the Great Depression, Springfield, Illinois managed to put together a Christmas parade. Do you believe that? So we got through the Great Depression, and we went through all these hard times as a city. Yet we've got to a point in which people put themselves in a circle of other people that are like them 
that are circles of the various things that we are not supposed to discriminate against each other about. Look at some of these circles. There are people that hang together because they have the similar bond within those circles and they stay in those circles. And yet we're not supposed to discriminate against anyone of in, that's in any of these circles, yet people only hang together and self-discriminate against someone else who's in not their circle. That's kind of weird how it works here. So if you ever want to help someone out that's in your circle and your circle of people, that's fine. You're always accepted. But if you ever see someone else that is not like you and they belong to a totally different group and you said, I think I can help that person, know that you are not in that person's life. You're not in that person's circle. And the help you barge in, let's say, and say, do this. This is what works in where I come from. This is what works for us. And you have to do this. That may not work in their world. It's always good to get yourself involved as a friend to someone you want to help first and you get involved in their circle and you see where they're at, who they're with and things like that and you become friends with them first. To barge your ideals into somebody else's circle without knowing them or their circle can sometimes be catastrophic versus helpful even though you have good intentions. So this is good to know that when you are a circle jumper, you circle jump by making friends first. And if someone else needs a hand, then they'll trust you more rather than someone barging in and saying, do this, do that, and being militant. So uh, it's it, this is all about bringing Springfield forward and making more circle jumpers and not people that stay in their circles and live their whole life within their circles, but being people that reach out, go beyond their own boundaries and meet people. So be a circle jumper, be a freckle on this map, be one of the colors that moves away and goes somewhere else, another part of town. Pick your circle, go make friends. Let's move this town forward because I think we are ready. And I'm here for you. I would like you to move forward. I'm here to say hi to you and meet you here. And I hope you come back. And for the people at home, I hope you come back to my channel, but let's all do this. Because we can, as I say, let's do this. Circles in the city. Again, thanks for having me, everybody. This is a great facility. I mean, it's beautiful. You got to check this out. You can't beat that. So beautiful facility. Thanks again. And if you got any questions, you can ask after we're done with the video. But also for you at home, if you like the video, click like. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe and you get notified every time we upload a video. So I'll always keep coming back. I love seeing you guys come on back and we'll do this again.